Hi, Paul Turley for another edition of Azure Every Day. And today, I want to talk to you about storage. Storage. Storage is what brings us together today. As we think about the architecture of the modern data warehouse, that can come in a few different forms. It could be a, it could be a relational warehouse which is stored as a traditional star or snowflake schema, or it could be a hub and spoke model or a data vault model where we're storing a lot of data in one of these different schemas and then we can derive data marts from the larger data warehouse for reporting and analytics. Or it could be a data lake using cloud-based, more modern storage mechanisms that serve as a trusted data repository. However, if we're not careful, a data lake can also be a data junkyard or a data swamp. So let's look at the modern Microsoft Data Warehouse platform. Over on the left side, we have the simplest form, or what we call the low or no code business analytics solution. Using the Power BI platform, where we actually store data using data flows and the common data model, which actually stores data in the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. Moving toward the right, you can see that we can use transformation tools and orchestration tools like Azure Data Factory, Azure Data Bricks, and then we can actually store that data in Azure SQL Database or Azure SQL Data Warehouse. And then for compute and analytics, Azure Machine Learning and other services like cognitive services that are available in the cloud. This is all in addition to raw data that we would ingest and stage and potentially archive. All of this involves storage. So why choose to use cloud-based storage instead of traditional on-prem physical storage devices? Well, Cloud storage can be less expensive and much easier and more reliable. So let's take a look at some options. The least expensive storage option within Azure is actually Azure Data Lake Storage with locally redundant storage. That means that your data is actually stored in two different places. And if there were a failure, then we could roll over to that locally redundant storage. We also have the option for geo-redundancy and faster or more optimized storage options using block blobs, managed disks, or files. Now let's just do some quick math to figure out how cost-effective cloud-based storage really is. Let's say that I have a terabyte of data that I just need to archive and um, store offline. Now I can run down to Costco or on Amazon, I can buy an inexpensive consumer grade one terabyte um, external disk for about 50 bucks, so that's pretty cheap. So let's take a look at that, that $50 disk drive if I compare that to the cost of the least expensive Azure storage with local redundancy uh, over two years, that's going to cost me about half of what that external hard disk is going to cost me. Now, for redundancy, that's going to cost me two or three hundred dollars for a RAID device that has one terabyte of storage. And so, again, that's costing me at least five or six times what it would cost me to store that data in Azure. So as you can see, cloud storage is pretty cheap. Azure storage concepts start with Azure Data Lake Gen 1. Now Gen 1 was actually based on the Hadoop file system. So going back a few years when big data was new, Microsoft chose to build their data lake technology on top of Hadoop, which was a distributed file system which allowed very efficient storage for text-based data. As we move forward, Azure Data Lake Gen 2 is based on blob storage, which is much more flexible and can be faster. So eventually, Azure Data Lake Gen 2 will replace Gen 1, which is based on blob storage. Depending on what you're storing, whether it is truly binary data stored in binary large objects, or files, or text, or other types of data sources, there are different storage containers within 
Azure Data Lake Gen 2 that can be used as the most optimal way to store that data. Blob containers are the most flexible. You also have different scale and performance options, which include premium or high throughput. It's going to be a little more expensive. For most workloads, we can use what's called hot storage for the most economical sources where we're not so concerned about performance, you can use cool storage. And then when you just need to archive data that we only need to get to occasionally or on demand, you can also use the cheaper archive option for backups and offline storage. Related but on a different topic, data transformation options include Azure Data Factory and Logic Apps. Azure Data Factory actually encompasses a number of different transformation tools, which include SSIS. You can now lift and shift existing SSIS packages into the cloud incorporated with Azure Data Factory. Also Databricks, which is based on Apache Spark and big data technologies adopted by Microsoft. And now we will actually have the ability to use Power Query within Azure Data Factory. Uh, which was just recently announced and will be available within the next few months. I hope this gives you a better understanding of your storage options in the cloud, whether you're architecting a database solution, an application, a data warehouse, or a data analytics solution. You have lots of great options within the Azure ecosystem to store, ingest, and manage your data. That's it for Azure Every Day. I appreciate you joining. Watch for these resources after the recording.